<laughs> uh, that's Camelia Peterson joining us on camera right now. How you doing, CJ? I'm doing good. I work out. You work out. <laughs> I, I have to say, my response to that MSNBC article claiming that uh, working out at home is linked to far right extremism, I was like, man, they couldn't. It's like, it, it makes you think maybe there is a God, right? Because the comedy is just too good. It's too perfect. It made me want to go work out. What about you? Right. Well, you know, I read through that article and I was like, I really feel a lot stupider after. Read that. <laughs> <laughs> Only a I professor mean, could be that stupid. And it's like, you know, I don't know if this passes as journalism or if it even passes as an op-ed. I'm not sure what this is anymore, but boy, it was it was a it was a workout to have to stretch to reach to some of those points is what I'm telling you here. <laughs> <laughs> Where does this come from, though? I mean, let's just get right into the nitty gritty here. Why write a piece like this, Camelia? You know, I think that they are grasping at straws and I think that they are finding, you know, they're, they've got to find something to use to villainize the other side. And, you know, Trump is, well, like Trump is Trump. I think kind of Trump is like not the, he's kind of waning, if that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Not as hot as it was before. Yeah, I and noticed so, that. Yeah, it is just, um, you know, Fuentes is popping up and there's some of these things. So I think they're looking because they're constantly trying to, um, what's the Patriot Front group and some of those others, you know, they're looking for these groups that, you know, white supremacist groups, and they're looking to see how they can elevate them to make them a bigger deal than they really are, because they've got to have a boogeyman to focus on. They do. And I think that's a really good point here is that it, it used to be that Donald Trump was the absolute center of all of our worlds. And for the left wing media, that meant clicks and the, and money. So they really need another boogeyman. Right. So it's always this right wing extremism, the rise of white supremacy and things like that. But like specifically when they're saying related to working out at home. Right. They weren't talking about guy, people going to the gym or anything like that. And they're, they're linking it with a hyper masculinity. I mean, as if, you know, working out and being ex exercising and being masculine is a negative thing. I mean, I know that they really see it that way. But why do you think they see it that way? Why well, is that? A, why is that a threat to them, Camelia? Well, I do think that, you know, they anything that um, <clears throat> conveys physical strength, I think is is something that they feel that is threatening, uh, even though, you know, they do literal violence when they protest and all of these other things. Um, but it is interesting that really one of the first things she starts talking about was Hitler and in Mein Kampf, you know, fixating on boxing and jujitsu. So now all of a sudden, you know, of course, everything is always literally Hitler. <laughs> now, you know, uh, I and I maybe I have missed something here, but why is why is far right Nazism like? Why are those equated? Uh, you know, it's 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 a trope that the left has has engaged in for years. I mean. Do, it, Depending on how you see the political spectrum, you just say everything is far right, right? If you're not, you know, it, I, I liked that um, a meme that I saw of the political spectrum where it's the square and in the top, top, far left hand corner, you have, you know, the left or like good people. And then still in the communist section, but just a little bit to the right is the alt right. And then everybody else in that spectrum is Nazi. They really do see it that way. If you're if you're not with us, you're against us. I mean, uh, there was some guest that I had on my show recently. Oh, I think it was like ultra gay biker dad, or maybe mm. it was or maybe I was talking to Wood. Yeah, I was talking to Wood Hippie the other day. We actually got to meet him in person. Remind me to tell you that story lately. Okay. And he was talking about how he used to be a you know vote Democrat, and now he finds himself a, a right wing Republican. I mean, the left is like actively pushing as many people as they can over into our camp, which good for us. But it, it reminds me a little bit of like not a true libertarian in that sense, right? They're kind of like the Democrats are making the mistakes of the libertarians. Right. Well, and I think, you know, I was just thinking there was the other day, um, there was a clip that was going around from an MMA guy who was, you know, saying some, you know, really conservative right wing things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think that they're you know, maybe there does tend to be um, more of that tendency in, you know, physical sports or combat sports. I don't know. And I don't know why that is. I, I can tell you that uh, one of my favorite Instagram accounts that I that came up in my suggestions here a few weeks ago 
is called the Emotional Support Viking. And I was fascinated because it's this, you know, big Viking looking dude, you know, really buff and everything. And basically he's uh, a workout, um, he's a coach for, for women and his target is um, single mothers and divorced women or whatever. But he's there. What fascinated me is he is definitely very much on the right. And he's funny when he does his videos, um, you know, gives good advice and, you know, was uh, knocking on Joe Biden. And one that was like, OK, I'm, I'm listening now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I think that they that they do see some of those some of those trends in people who are into fitness. And I don't know why, because, you know, she does say in here is like, you know, we know that fitness is something that that everybody can benefit and get into. But like, if you're really hardcore, you're far right. <laughs> if you're just tuning in to Wake Up America show, uh, we're glad to have you here. You can text us today at 573-319-1586. Camelia, this is a little bit of breaking news. And this is something that really is just for you and me for the most part, because I, I don't think the audience is going to really get this. But you know that troll group that attacks you all the time online, Local Control Missouri? Yes. <laughs> so they're out. So they're now attacking me, I guess, for being affiliated with you. And I mean, these are like, you know, the, it, it, Missouri is like the meth capital. These people are definitely on it. So I tweeted this morning um, asking the question, are you buying coffee from people that hate you? Right. Because I'm talking about, you know, Black Rifle Coffee and how they, they called Kyle Rittenhouse supporters racists. And of course, Starbucks donates to every woke cause there is. So I said, you know, my, my campaign is stop buying coffee from people who hate you, buy coffee from me at Founding Flavors. And so Local Control Missouri retweeted this apparently an hour ago, saying, I'm not buying from a Koch brother lover who activity works against a constitutional republic and sponsors extreme left propaganda at South by Southwest Education Conference with sessions for drag oh, time Lord. story hour and works with Waltons. Nope. What the hell? <laughs> who are these people? I know who they are and I'm not telling anybody. I'm not, I am, I am not saying their name and giving them oxygen, but yeah, it's like, you know, it's typical troll, you know, they got to have the same tired old talking points and do the gymnastics um, and do the workout to try to, you know, six degrees of, cons you know, Kevin Bacon conspiracies, you know, to connect all these things. <laughs> so Yeah. Uh, I am a, a, a globalist, dark money, you know, enthusiast. What can I say? <laughs> These people are so retarded. Oh, my God. It's hilarious. They can't even spell um, active, actively. It's uh, They spell activity. Anyways. Uh, I'm... <clears throat> yes. Uh, well, and that's somebody that's in education, and it's that's sad. Of course they are. Of course they are. That's why, our, you know, is our children learning? Um, Camelia Peterson, we're glad to have you here on the show. Um, it, it, this whole, like, you know, push against, you know, hyper-masculinity, working out from home, it smells to me of big vagina. Um, and when I say that, I mean, we're talking about big vagina energy here, where it's this real desire, this push from postmodern feminism and act the active far left Marxist feminists who they really despise men, they hate men, you know, kill all men, right? It's not the, it's not even like the rage-filled sort of bra-burning feminism of the 1960s, right? Which you could say, okay, you know, I have a point. You want to go brawless, that's your point, right? But th these people actively despise men. A and that's where I think a lot of the transgender activism comes from, right? They want to cut off little boys' wing-wangs because they despise them or they're secretly jealous or envious of them or of us. Uh, and the power that men have as a natural result of of our um, of our sex, of our gender. They want to be us, and they can't be us, right? And, you know, they'll never be like us. And so there's a lot of, like, that, what do you call that, Freudian sort of, um, you know, desire. What, what do they call that? Penis envy is what he called it. Yeah, I think yeah. I, there's a lot of that. <laughs> And yeah. that's and I and I think too and may, and this is how I'll segue to the Jonah Hill topic. Did you listen earlier when I was talking about what I thought really triggered people about what Jonah Hill was saying? Not that he necessarily had boundaries at all, but specifically that one of his boundaries was that he wanted his girlfriend to stay away from women who are in unstable places. Do you agree right. with well, me? Yes. And I will say too that what you were saying as far as, you know, why the motivation behind why they're doing this, I do think this is also in response 
to um, the backlash that they are starting to see um, with, you know, men are pushing back and not just men, but, you know, some women as well against this assault on masculinity. And so there, I mean, there is pushback now, and I think they see that and anything that smacks of masculine strength, um, you know, they, they, they want to feminize men. And also this ties into this body positivity thing, because things like this are a threat to body positivity. And so I really do think that that is probably a big part of it. And I think that, you know, with some of those boundaries that Jonah Hill was talking about, um, those are, you know, a lot of, of the talking points you hear as part of this pushback and right. That idea that uh, you know, stable friends. I mean, the fact that you even have to say that, I, I, you know, I don't get it. I'm, right. I know that I'm kind of hard on my own gender sometimes, a lot of the times, maybe that's why. Well, for sure. But I mean, there, there is, if there's a mental health crisis in this country, there might be, a, you know, an, uh, you know, I, I guess I'll just say the word there, there is a suicide problem with men yeah. in this country. Women attempt suicide more men succeed at it more right but you know attempting in it in itself would imply some instability right if women are attempting it more then that might imply that women are really losing their nut these days uh camelia you know i i advise um you know, a, a lot of times young men will ask me for relationship or dating advice or things like that because you know they see that i'm in a happy stable fulfilling relationship and they're like you know how do i have something like this and i tell men don't chase women uh, and camelia you know you, you've known me for like three or four years now to know that like really i don't really i never did even before i you know i settled down and and changed you know my my attitude and my behaviors towards things like marriage or things like that it's not a good idea for men to chase women because one there's danger involved and two women aren't interested in men that are interested in them am i wrong I'm a little, I'll be honest, I'm a little conflicted on this. And mostly because this is, this is a cultural thing. It's what, it's what has been the cultural norm um, that has been accepted for a long time is that it's the role of men <laughs> to mm -hmm. pursue women. Um, but yes, I mean, this day and age where I, I don't, you know, Jonah Hill, I think mm, somewhat walked into his situation in that he pursued her from, there's like a whole bunch of other texts that I've seen now that, that she's been putting out and things. And he initially pursued her because of what he saw on her Instagram. Um, so he was seeing all of the things that other men were seeing. But when they got into a relationship, he expected that behavior to stop. And that's probably unrealistic. I mean, you know, if she was going to stop that kind of behavior that attracted him in the first place, um, she probably would have done it on her own, you know, out of her investment in their relationship. But that was not her. But here's the thing. Was it unrealistic when I when I decided to get married? Was it unrealistic to ask me to stop whoring around? You know what I mean? Like, was it unrealistic to ask me to stop going around and and being the the you know, the bon vivant that I was, right, in that sense. It, it, it wasn't unrealistic. The, the point of this whole conversation, I think, is that it's okay for women to have standards and to set boundaries for men, but it doesn't exist. It, that's a one-way street in modern society. Right. Am I wrong? Hmm. No, I think that that's correct. And I do think that, you know, he was right to come out and verbalize his boundaries. It sounded like, and from some of the other texts that she kept putting out, with the fact that she timed this the way she did and this, like, that's, you know, she's, she's got some FOMO going on there, some regret. She's, you know, she's missing out. And now just she's had a trying baby, to laugh. So she's probably yes. really feeling like her eggs right. are like, ee, that could have been me. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you know, she's, um, there were a lot of things that, you know, she was talking about how the, oh, she was just nerdy, innocent, idiot, whatever. Like she said, she's like trying to play the dumb card mm -hmm. and he's spelling it out. But, you know, they're also in those other texts, like this was, there obviously had been things going on that were emotionally hurtful. Um, there had been issues already. They obviously had already talked about these things and he probably had finally just reached the point to where like, look here in black and white, here are my expectations. Mm -hmm. And she was like, is this a test? <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe so. <laughs> Probably rightfully so. 
So, I mean, you know, the thing is, is like, I, I saw this thing the other day, and this is where I don't blame a lot of men for, for being uh, very slow to get into relationships and for being jaded about this right now, because I saw something the other day, I talked about two different kinds of courage. There's a kind of courage where, you know, you run out to battle and whatever, and, you know, you're fighting and that's one kind of courage. And the other kind of courage is um, vulnerability. And when you decide to, you know, open yourself up to someone that takes a huge amount of courage but, and, and it's risk taking, um, you know, so it, it's, you really expose yourself and take that risk in doing that, um, you know, putting that much trust into someone else. And so I think it's normal that he was hurt in that because she didn't, um, she obviously was not invested enough in him to just change her behavior on her own. So, you know, he was trying to set that and say, look, here's my line. Right. But I mean, you know, women are trying to act, uh, you know, in attacking Jonah Hill as if, you know, it's unrealistic to expect someone to change once they get into a serious relationship. I mean, if a man starts saying things like that to you, you I would think a woman would be excited because they would say, oh, wow, this guy actually is trying to set me up for a real serious relationship, a real serious relationship. And, and that's the hardest thing for a woman to achieve, right? Women control access to sex and men control access to relationships. So when a man signals in such a way that he's asking for boundaries, he's signaling that he's ready to take this relationship to the next level. You would think that, that a woman would be excited by this, but instead they demand, no, no, I want to have unfettered capability. I want unfettered access to uh, alone time with other men and unfettered access to time spent with unstable women. So what she's really saying there is that she doesn't really want to be in a relationship to a man. Right. Am I wrong? No, I, I think that's absolutely right. She is definitely not on his level. She was not where she was, you know, when they, when, when in their conversations, when they talked about um, surf culture, you know, I don't, I don't know exactly what that means, but obviously there were things that were chalked up to that, that were problematic. However, you know, whatever that meant for her relationship with um, men who were in those circles. So, um, you know, she was not ready to give up the freedom and validation that she was getting from other places. Um, you know, so yeah, I mean, I think, you know, by the time you reach that point in a relationship with somebody, it's hard to, I mean, it's not that it's just easy to walk away, but when he puts those kind of, you know, ultimatums, so to speak, out there, and he points out so those harsh realities about the people around her, I mean... I know you could say that women would take that as a signal that, you know, oh, he really, you know, he loves me. He wants to settle down, whatever. But I think most people are going to get defensive and take it personally because it is a judgment on their own character and their own choices. Perhaps. Uh, it, I, I just, I think that... Um everybody wants to have their cake and eat it too. Wouldn't it be nice, right? To, you know, the double standards oftentimes exist for a reason. Uh, you know, when you have situations like these, uh, she was never going to be treated the same way in the media that Jonah Hill was. But there's some lessons for men, I think, to learn from this. One is that I would say you can't put things like this in writing in forms of text, right? This is a good example of never to yeah. really put, you shouldn't put your thoughts down in writing text messages and things like that because you never, especially sensitive things like this. And then I would say, well, alternatively, what you should do is you should say them to the person out loud, right? But they even then still, if you do that over the phone, they can record you. So, uh, you know, unfortunately, if, if you want to have these kinds of conversations, you should probably, as a man, have these conversations alone in private, not over the phone directly to the person in order to protect yourself. Because unfortunately, even if you think you can trust someone, people really do show their true colors with this. And if you're a celebrity or something like that, there's too much incentive for people to try and screw you over. So can I ask you, though, just briefly, though, Camelia, because I've got you for a couple more minutes. Um, you were talking earlier uh, responding to what I was saying about like how men shouldn't chase women. It, you know, it used to be in the 1950s. You found a cute girl. 
you you took her to the dance, right? You asked her, do you want to go to the prom with me and all that kind of stuff? But can you see why now I think it's a better idea and possibly understand why I would advise men not to chase women, why it's a better idea for them not to spend their time on dating apps or doing things like trying to go out there and trying to snag a, a female? Could you understand like my reasoning behind that? I can understand the reasoning. I don't know, you know, if 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 that's going to be the approach, I don't know realistically. I mean, that narrows men's options down a lot, if we're being honest. I th which is a good thing, <laughs> which is a good thing, right? Because, you know, if you think about it, I mean, the 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 best relationships that I've always had have been ones where I was pursued versus pursuing. Because what the psychology of this is, we're talking about and and you know a large amount of unstable females here. The psychology of this here is that when you pursue a female, typically what happens is that they they don't want to be they don't think that a man that is pursuing them is worthy of their time or their energy because other what if if he's got time to spend texting you, calling you, asking, you know, trying to get, you know, trying to court you and all that stuff. He's not doing the things that's that are that will make him attractive to you. Working out at home, becoming a far right wing severe white supremacist, right? Uh, working out, getting, you know, doing his hustle, doing all the things that make him attractive, you know, uh, uh, building himself up. It, that that's really what I'm trying to say here is that if it narrows down his options, so be it, right? There's a large right. pool of mentally unstable, you know, big vagina energy out there that you you don't want to have anything to do with anyway. But if you want to find that one good right one as a man and really have a good, healthy, stable relationship, um, don't spend your time chasing women. Make them chase you, right? The minute you stop oh. chasing something, it's like a bird. Um, if you chase a bird, it's never going to come to you. You know, you'll never catch it. But if you put bird seed out in your hand and you sit there and wait, what happens? The bird will come to you. So I haven't really, um, I guess I was, had not really thought it through in this way before, um, as far as that concept, but I do think that, you know, men not chasing women, um, you know, if women are always pursued that there's also that sets a level of expectation there in how much they have to invest in a relationship. Yes. And so I can see that um, because if it's one way and it's always, you know, the man coming to the woman, that's not realistic. Um, and, and just in terms of how men and women function in general, um, because if men don't kneel, feel the need to be in constant contact relationally or to talk all of the time, and that's okay. Um, but I think that, you know, so... Uh, for women, maybe this is this is a lesson in managing expectations because um, perhaps the men always pursuing women in that like courtship phase or whatever of a relationship sets unrealistic expectations for real life. Yeah, if you if the thing is, it's like that Ashley St. Clair conversation we were having last week. Men, you know, our behavior can shape women's behavior. And so it, what you're saying there is that, you know, women in being chased and pursued and simped for, right, simping and stuff like that, it sets their expectations very, very high for what kind of a man they want in their life. Or they sometimes they call this relationship in the red pill, pill world, they call it um, an alpha widow. Have you ever heard of this concept? I'm not sure. This is a woman who has had access to an alpha male, had a relationship with an alpha male, and they they then once they lose access to that alpha male, the bar has now been set for their standards of expectations in a relationship. Yeah. And then at that point in time, they realize, oh my God, I'm never going to be able to meet that kind of a standard again. If I want to have a relationship with someone, I have to settle, if you will. And there's nothing that will drive the big vagina energy more insane than telling them that maybe you should consider lowering your expectations or your standards if you don't desire to be a cat lady. I have a question for you. Now you're going to offend people by calling me a cat lady. <laughs> no, I do have a question though. So when you talk about double standards, and I know that there are inevitable double standards, no matter what, you know, we talk about, but when you talk about double standards, would it have been okay in the Jonah Hill situation for something like that to have been if the roles were reversed? 
You, well, you mean like what she's at, as setting standards and I'm expectations? Just saying, like if yeah. it was, if it was, yes, if it was a Camelia, woman, you don't know saying, what it's like to be are... a man. Like that is, like the here's the 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 first boundary that gets set is always set by the woman, and it's always start and it always <laughs> starts with one question. Here it is. So, like, what are we? Oh gosh. <laughs> Thus it begins. So yeah, of course, I, I, I you realize as a, as a man that when you put yourself into a relationship with with one woman, you're giving up all of your desires, your, your biological innate desires to go and be with as many women as possible, right? Because you know that having a lot of women around is not good for her, and it's it's not something that she wants. She has standards and expectations that start pretty much on day one, right? She may be she may be pretending that oh we're just having fun, we're just dating, it's casual or whatever, it's a situation ship. But in the in the back of her mind, if she thinks that you're you know a certain type of material, then she you know very soon you're going to get that question. So like, what are we? So yeah, I think roles reversed. It pretty much. Yeah, it, it's pretty common. I mean, it's it's not, it's a double standard there. I do you think you think that men just automatically do that, or you know, how would a man respond? Like, you know, if they had to be asked to do those things, I guess is my point. Well, uh, what to stop posting thirst traps on Instagram or something like that? I don't think it. I don't think it exists. <laughs> I think I think it doesn't work that way because a woman wants a man who is desired. A man has to, you know, a man who doesn't want to feel like he constantly has to fight to keep his 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 woman because he's so busy doing all that other stuff he wants to keep a, a a woman in his corner but a woman wants a man who is hotly pursued a woman they like that like when when a girl sees that other women are lusting after their man that's what they want they want they want that status symbol they like that that the, if if girls are popping into my dms i show that to my wife right i show that because i know for a fact that she gets off on that right that's that's a woman's kink right when when you've got a man that was constantly pursued that's that's called social proof right and and so if you're if you've got a husband or a boyfriend or, or whatever a lover or something like that and you and he's constantly being pursued by women and he's posting thirst traps and girls are coming after him so that as long as he's you know being transparent and showing you know not cheating or screwing around on you and he's being faithful i think a woman loves that right there's nothing a woman loves more than a man who is who is desired by her peers because there's nothing a woman wants more than to upstage all of her female colleagues and to put them in their place Oh boy. <laughs> well, um, I think we all have a lot of room to grow. <laughs> <laughs> Camelia Peterson, thank you very much for your time today. I got to run. I'm running late. I got to get John Miltimore in here to talk about why it's not okay to be a white person in public. Okay. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, thank you and have a great day, everybody. Thanks. You too. Bye, CJ. We'll be back in just a few minutes with John Miltimore on the, the Wake Up America show. 